now that you are a kite surfer, you gotta know about your gear. Uh, as what they say, right? If you wanna be a carpenter, you better own a hammer. So once you own your equipment, we'll show you what you need to do. When we teach our beginner wind, uh, kite surfing lesson, we don't teach any kite setup or anything until people own their own gear. Because most of the time when you teach, one year later, six months later, you have no idea how to do kite setup. So you have to redo the whole thing all over again. So let's go over the gear. We definitely need the kite. Make sure you select the right kite for you. You need the bar, make sure it's the right bar. Usually when you buy a kite and the bar should buy in the same brand, but you could do interchangeable. Some brand are interchangeable with each other. Harness is super important. Make sure you find one that fit you properly. And don't forget, a lot of time people have the harness and forgot their leash, okay? There's two li different leash, there's short leash and this is long leash. So the harness is one of the most important equipment here. Make sure it fit you properly in the right proper size. So there's different uh, type of harness also. There's seat harness and there's waist harness. This one's a waist harness and there's a soft shell harness and this is a hard back. Hard back, if you're doing crazy jump and uh, you go high and you get yanked by the kite, this is safer because as you can see, it doesn't squeeze your tummy, okay? It stay in shape. So it's kind of like pushing you forward. Personally, I enjoy this a lot, but you know, when you're hitting 10 meters, you need that. And make sure you get a very proper outfit for my taste, something very flashy, because if I get in trouble, people could find me easily. A rash guard for jellyfish, a rash guard for anything at all in the sea, or wetsuit if it's cold, because hypothermia, the hypothermia is not fun. So the proper size board for yourself. If you're a beginner, probably you need a bigger board. When you become more experienced guy, you will use a smaller board. But we'll go by the size chart. Uh, when you go by a board, they will tell you if you're 70 kilo or it's go by your weight. Uh, if you're heavier, you use a bigger board. A, wi a wider board always will be better than the skinnier board. Wider board go upwind very, very easily. If you're a tall guy, you need a longer one. A longer board will go over the chop, the bump, the waves much better than the short one. But the short one, when the wind is honking, is the best because it doesn't have so much surface so that you don't have to etch so hard. Last but not least, don't forget the pump. This is the simple air pump. It's a double action pump. So when you push it down, it pump air. When you pull it up, it pump air, okay? We are very lazy. We're using a electric. <laughs> we are electric uh, pump. So it's very, very easy to use, all right. Before you set up the kite, make sure you have all the equipment to the beach because if you forget something, it's absolutely annoying. So now that we have the kite, uh, sometimes when you go set up your kite, you're not gonna be the only kiter in there. So always respect the area, okay? Don't just leave your kite all over the place. So just look at the area, make sure you're not over, you don't run the line over other people. You give room for other people too. So usually when you go to a good spot or a kite shop or a kite school, they'll have an area where you set up the kite. So come and talk to the shop, come and talk to the local. Uh, say where's the best place to set up my kite, how do I do it or something like that. It's just a little information that you need to know. The first thing you want to do is inspect up the area that you're going to set up the kite. Most of the time we have to do it in the sand because in the sand sometimes there's broken shell, broken gl glasses or any sticks or anything. It could puncture the sail. So you want to make sure that that area is clean. Luckily we have a beautiful tarp over here so that we could lay our kite properly. So make sure you know where the wind coming from. When we set up kite, you have to set everything downwind from you at all time. The kite and all the equipment has to be downwind of you because if this get picked up by the wind, it will hit you. So make sure you understand where the wind coming from first. So today wind is coming from here, everything will go this way. I'm gonna grab the leading edge, spread out my kite and put it out and spread it out. So while you're setting up the kite, it's also very important, this is a, the best time to also inspect for any malfunction, any damage or anything at all. Maybe like last session, you dragged the kite through some coral or something and you did not, you're so tired and you didn't really look at it. So it's really good to make sure that you understand and you're, you get into a habit of checking your kite every single time you set it up. So spread it out. We have the bridle, clear it out. Sometimes the bridle, you have to check it. Sometimes the bridle could be, some kite has longer bridle than the other. So sometimes this bridle could go like this and make a little knot. Just this alone, this will tilt the, 
the kite completely it will be tilted you will not fly it properly so make sure you check it all the time make sure there's no wear and tear especially when you go rent a kite make sure uh, in Europe when you rent a kite they just drop a kite in front of you and you have to set this up yourself therefore you have to inspect make sure that there's no holes because little tiny pinhole when you bang the kite really really hard it could turn into a very very big hole so and then you're gonna be responsible for the kite so very important so now come to the middle of the kite there should be an air valve all the new system now is usually dump valve and the pump valve is the same one okay make sure you secure this tightly and after you pump finish pumping it already you could make it uh, you could secure it again by just do a little twist not too tight just make sure that it doesn't come off okay so this this is very simple and uh, make sure you secure the kite before you pump the kite because right now it's lying down without it anything pick it up but usually there's a little hook here and there's a anchor here so once you have that make sure the hole is clear you want to do one pump or two pump to make sure that don't no sand get in there and then you just start pumping and use your knees when you pump see this is also the first thing you do on um, when you set up um, the kite make sure you pump your kite and leave it and then run the line or if the pumping area is being taken you could go run the line first you could run the line anywhere and then come back grab your kite and go put it where your lines are so but right now we're gonna pump this <laughs> under inflating kite will not make your kite stable the kite will be very flabby you could uh, fold the wing and what happened there is the kite will not fly properly and also will lose power so you want to make sure your kite is well pumped how do you know usually when you buy a kite it will tell you this kite takes 6 psi take 8 psi depends on the kite design right so but i might not know the way you want to feel it is squeeze it just like bicycle tie right so you could even hear the sound of it and the best way to do it is make sure it's secure come to the wing tip here and fold it if i could fold it easily like this <laughs> when the kite take power it's gonna fold it also in the air and we don't want this so as a beginner we want it to be maybe like this because we don't want too much air into here because if a, a beginner uh, still a tomahawk the kite let's say the kite hit the water really hard and you inflate it really hard the kite could blow up also so you want a little forgiving when we teach for the student we make it a little bit softer however that will work against you when it comes to relaunching because a soft kite when you pull it doesn't follow it doesn't keep shape so it's harder so make sure you have a good proper well pump kite when i go out in the storm on a, a smaller kite and the wind is gusty i make sure i even pump the kite a little over pumped not over pump but like really tight make sure that i cannot pull the wing at all so but you don't want to over pump because it can blow up your kite also all right so now when you finish i'm just gonna under pump this a little bit close the valve properly so Make sure the valve is closed properly and double check, triple check, make sure and listen to it. Make sure that you don't hear any, any uh, sound of air leaking. <laughs> leaking kite is the worst thing. Leaking kite, you will not be able to control your kite, number one. Number two, it will not float. It will just sink into the sea. So that means you don't have your safety, um, safety kite anymore. So now in the strut, there's a uh, tube. Is the airflow tube okay it goes in the strut this kite has three strut so i like to keep this closed some people leave it open to let the air go in and out personally i like to close it why because if i have a little leak on my strut i will lose air in here but i won't lose air in the main strut uh, the leading edge the very important if the leading edge is still hard and the strut is soft you still could fly the kite it will be fine but if you lose air in the main leading edge you are done because it will not fly properly so make sure this is the most important thing but make sure there's no leaking so close all the strut or leave it open it's up to you personally i like to keep it closed when we handle the kite we always stay in the middle of the kite if there's wind 
it will work like this. It will go underneath the kite and keep the kite up in the air. So make sure you don't grab the kite by the wing. So if you grab the kite by the wing here, you will not have proper control. If this is 20 knots, I will not have control of the kite. But if I stay in the middle of the kite, I am the pole. This is my flag. It will never go anywhere. So always handle the kite from the middle. To, la to park the kite, all I have to do is walk over, one hand under, one hand over. And I make sure I face the kite to wherever the wind coming from. Very, very simple. If this is a very strong wind day, it's, it's good to have something to secure it so it doesn't come up at all. You could put some sand onto the sail. Personally, I don't like that because it will stretch your sail because sand is heavy. And, but it's not good to leave your kite on the beach flopping. So if you're not gonna kite for a while, it's best to just, you could do a burrito roll. Burrito roll meaning you deflate the kite and just roll it up. Keep the air in the strut, close the strut first, and then you roll it like a burrito. We'll show you later when we pack up the kite. So, all right, let's run the line. All right, to run the line, make sure it's the same thing as your kite. Check your line while you're running it also to see if there any malfunction, any sign of damage at all, because these line is, you have four lines here. The two front line is designed, with all the lines are designed to handle over 300 kilos. However, if there's a little cut on it or something like that, this cut, these, these lines, they could be easily cut by a scissor right now. So you have a coral wrapping on it. It could get cut very, very easily. So you have to make sure you inspect your lines at all time. Usually in the kite surfing world, red is left, blue is right, red, red is left, blue is right. So there's a couple ways of running the lines. You could run it upwind, or you, are, you could run it downwind, or you could run it sideways, okay? It's up to you. The easy one will be running downwind. What does that mean is you will see everything is color coded. So you have red, and then when you come to this side, The bridle, the back bridle will be red. The other side is blue. So you cannot mess this up, okay? Red, they, they color code it for you. So if you have red and blue, that means it's wrong. It has to be red and red. And then one side will be the loop and the other side will be a knot here, a little bump here. Same thing with this. So it has to be connected with each other properly, okay? So now what I'm gonna do, I have plenty of room here. If you don't have this luxury, you could run the line somewhere else and then bring the kite where you started. But if you have plenty of room, you could leave the end of the line right next to the kite. If you're running downwind, put it right there and then run it downwind, okay? But running upwind, it red will be left, okay? Come on down. At the end of the control bar, you want the red to be on your left if you're running upwind. If you run downwind, it will be the opposite, okay? So your red will be on your right, but it doesn't matter as long as you match the side is fine. Put the bar down at the end here and step into it. Make sure the middle line is between your legs. So there's two different types of the splitter in the middle line. There's a high V and a low V. This is a low V. The high V will split around 10 meters up line, uh, up the line. So the low V will split just right here next to the bar and put the the lines between your fingers. So now I double check myself by putting the middle line between my legs so that it could never cross with the outside line. Red is on the left, blue is on the right. And then I put it between my fingers so I'm double checking as I walk toward the kite. So right here, if I need uh, two hands, I need one hand to clear the line, I could put all the lines in one hand just like this. And then it's still double check with each other because the other lines are between my legs and then you could just walk right back out so you're clearing the middle line and you're clearing everything if you're not sure if the line clear properly or not keep doing it until it's perfectly clear because tangle line or if you run the line wrong is very very dangerous for yourself and uh, most accidents happen for beginner when they set up the equipment wrong and then the kite go onto the tree or they crash the kite or they lost their kite. So at the end, we put the outside line way outside and you put the middle line in the middle and you could just keep this on you. I like to connect the, the, the back bridle first, okay? So now red and red, all good. We have a nut 
and we have a loop. So if you don't have a loop, put itself in itself. As you can see here, there's a little ribbon here. So you put that inside here and make a loop. So, and then you put the knot in here. Make sure you don't put the, the, the knot, the, the, you don't connect them like this. Otherwise, one line will be shorter than the other. You wanna put it at the end and you wanna do a quick tuck. So make sure that it's tight, okay? With the bridle, is I would suggest don't do it underneath. So if you're doing downwind, you could do it underneath. It's very easy to clear. But when you do it um, in uh, upwind, you have to make sure this is clear because if this bridle go like this, it will make the bridle tangle. So you have to make sure all the bridle clear if you're picking up from underneath the kite to bring it forward. So once again, gray and gray, a knot and a loop. So put that in there. So very important. And now if you do downwind, so downwind is very easy. As you can see here, this could be clear just like that. So it's very easy to go downwind. So it will be perfectly fine. So now to go upwind, you have to reach down and connect. Very easy. And last but not least, so if you're not sure if you run it right, oh, look at this. <laughs> See this? So sometimes this happens while you're doing it, make sure the all the bridle and everything doesn't look funny at all. So, and make sure all these lines, if you have a little knot in this line, it will make the line shorter. Like just imagine one knot. That will make shorten the line by one, uh, ten, uh, a centimeter and one centimeter is good amount of line to be too short. So let's just put it in, boop, check, whoop. If you're not kiting yet, you still have to get uh, dressed and everything. You could reel your line in and then you could put the, the bar next to the kite before you go out. So make sure you respect the spot, make sure you respect other people because you're not the only kiter on the spot. Sometimes they need that area to set up their kite too. So it's very important that you respect the area. Okay. To pack down, you could play my video backward, but since we can't, we're gonna go do it. So first detach everything, detach all the lines. Remember you have four lines in the bridle and if you detach more than four lines, you detach too many lines. So that means you detach uh, some kind of line that belong to the bridle system, okay? So don't do that. And then we go to the bar. So very important, some people leave the, this line out like this. It's just, there's no right or wrong way. This just depends on your preference. Personally, I've been doing this for so long and I put away the bars and I set up the kite like a million times. So personally, I like to pull everything in so there's nothing hanging because if this is hanging, later on, you don't know what to do with this. Some people wrap this around at the end of it. This is really bad because then it's too much curl. So you're gonna see that your line will be curled up, right? So me, I just like to pull everything in, okay? And then I grab two, go over on the side, grab three, and crisscross. So once again, grab two, go over on the side, grab three, crisscross will make your jump, jump. Mac Daddy will make your just crisscross line like this. Then it'll keep it nice and tidy. Make sure it's tight so that it doesn't come off. And then walk toward your the end of your line. So you could do this very quickly. The neater you do, the better you could, uh, the better you, the, the better and faster you could set up your kite next time. So very, very important that you keep everything neat. Make sure there's some metal part on this, so make sure you need to wash your bar with fresh water, okay? Wash and dry your bar all the time. Make sure you take good care of these lines. The bar costs good amount of money, and a lot of time, keep your bar next to your kite. A lot of time, people are in a hurry. It might be cold at the end of the day. You're tired, you're exhausted, and then you're, you pack up your bar, and then you leave it right next to the water, and then you pack up your board and everything. Next thing you know, you go home, and where's my bar? And that's a good amount of money to lose. I have found the bar many times because people lost their bar. We have forgot our bar on the beach all the time. So now from now, uh, we always make sure 
that we come around the beach before and make sure every time we go somewhere, we put the bar with the kite. So each one of them, if we're going somewhere else. So with this way, we always check ourselves that we have our kite, we have our bag, we have our pump, we have our bar, we have everything all together. Because trust me, once you get tired and adrenaline kick in, you're gonna forget a lot of stuff. So come on here. If this guy is wet, don't put it in the bag. It's gonna smell, it's gonna be molded. If you forget, oh, I did not drive my kite and you leave it in the bag for a couple of weeks, it's gonna get molded really, really bad and smell very bad also. So when the kite is ready, then just let the air out. If you wanna do burrito, then just uh, leave, make sure you close the, the clamper so that the air will stay in there. So let me just try to show you the burrito first. So the burrito is pretty simple. You let the air out on the main strut, on the main leading edge, and then you could fold the kite by the strut here, and then just roll it. So it's like a burrito. And this is when you have a place to put it away. And also it's, um, if you're gonna use it again. But if you need to put it in, pack down and put it in the back, then make sure you get all the air out. That means open the clamper, get all the air out and make sure it's as small as possible. Some of the kite has nice big bags. Some of the kite give very small, small bag, especially the 17. If you go with 17 square meters, the, the kite takes a lot of room. So, all right, so that's conclude our setup and pack down on the kite. If you're not sure, watch it again, watch it again, set it up again and again. It's gonna take many, many times. If you're not sure, just ask a, an experienced kiter. Please, can you help check my setup? Because if you're not, it's better to have a second pair of eyes to look after you and to, to double check for you. So if you run it wrong, it could be dangerous, all right? so. Set up your kite, buy your kite, and go out and enjoy yourself.